Hello and welcome back fellow space engineers to another Xbox tutorial. In this one, we're going to be looking at setting up your forest platform, getting some refineries on that, and making sure that they are connected with conveyors so that they can share inventory spots, because that is a very important part of space engineers. But here we are with a glorious sunrise. I have been mining out in my little pit here a lot overnight so that I have prepared a whole bunch of resources in order to uh, build with today as we're going to be looking at also the build planner ways that you can grab the resources you need to build a specific item without having to count it out and think about it hard because who wants to think while they're playing games you just want to have fun so the first thing we're going to want to build on this platform is a basic refinery as that allows you to refine your stone. Now we do have the survival kit that is capable of doing that and we will continue to use the kit for a little bit here. But if we can transfer to the station, we can build as many basic refineries as we want and we can get them all working in sequence so that we can just grind through stones super quickly. So let's find it. If we press down on the left stick, we'll open up the build menu and it's actually here in the bottom right to go to the basic refinery. Of course, this is just your recent blocks. So if you use your trigger to go over to production and medical, it is here at the top and we can cycle through the different blocks that are here. There's both the basic refinery and the full refinery. We haven't unlocked this full refinery yet, and we actually can't build it yet as it requires metal grids. And so we're not there yet. We need to get some cobalt and refine it first. But we'll go back to the recent blocks and we'll find basic refinery and we'll press right button to confirm in order to bring up the refinery. Now, you can see on the refinery that it actually has this yellow square to it. It's very similar to this yellow square here where we, where we have been accessing our survival kit and this one here on the H2O2 generator. What that is, is a conveyor port. Now this is a very important part of Space Engineers. It is how you transfer items from one block inventory to another. So we're gonna wanna make sure that these are accessible and aligned in such a way that we can use them. For example, say I had a refinery sitting right there and there's an open conveyor port on this side. I could then place another refinery right there with another open conveyor port and those refineries would be able to pass resources back and forth and work on the same load of resources, which is great. So I want to make sure that these are accessible. What I don't want to do is something like this, where I am pushing this open port up against a block because I could use that open port. Now, there are some times where that's the, the right thing to do simply because you don't have enough space. But right now I have lots of space. It's a nice open world here. So I don't have to worry about it. I'm not making some tiny little compact ship just yet. So I am going to place this block such that it is, uh, I'm going to use this, this edge right along here as where I'm going to place all of my blocks. So I'm going to place this one away and such that it is aiming to side to side like this with its two blocks. There we go. I'm going to place it right there. Now the reason why I did it as such, so the conveyor port will be here and here is that I can place blocks here and here that have conveyor ports and they will be able to share through the refinery. But now I have to build this thing. So I have to go in and see, okay, it needs so many steel plates, so many computers, so many motors. Oh, I've got to go over here and I've got to, I've got to count those out. That's just too much work. We don't want to do that. We want to use the build planner. And the build planner is an awesome tool that essentially allows you to pull out whatever you need from storage. So I'm going to walk over to this unbuilt item and I'm going to tap 
left trigger onto it. Components added to build planner. So if I go over to my respawn pod and look at its inventory, there should be this little option here. Withdraw components for build planner. If we look at our left um, stick press menu here to get into our blocks and we aim at any block, we can see in the bottom right there, build planner. And there is a basic refinery and we can see that the bar is part way through it. That means it's an incomplete block that we are wanting to get components for. We can also remove from the build planner by pressing Y. We can highlight over a block and press X to add it to the build planner. And so I'm going to do that now. I'm going to add the basic refinery and let's also add a couple wind turbines to our build planner. I want the resources to build all of those. Now, if you aim at a storage which would have those components, hold down right bumper and press your inventory button here, all components were successfully withdrawn. If you held down left bumper and press the inventory button, then you would put all of the components that you need into production, which is great because you could say lay out a design, add all of them to build planner, and then hold down left button and then walk up to your inventory and just put all the components into production. So I can just do that right here. Uh, build planner. Oh, it's empty because I actually put stuff on it. So let's say, say this assembler. I'm going to need the assembler anyway, right? So I'm going to add it to my build planner. I'm going to go over to here, hold down left button and hit inventory and all components were successfully put into production. So if I go at my production, we can see that it has added all of the different things. I'm going to need 38 of these, 10 of these, 80 of these. And it's going to attempt to build all these. Now, of course, we've run out of resources and I actually have everything I need, but that is how you can add components onto your production and your build planner quite easily. So now, in my inventory, I have everything I need to build this basic refinery. Excellent. And we'll get this welded up lickety split here. Now, the basic refinery isn't as efficient as the full-size refinery, but it is quite small. It's nice and compact, and it's pretty fast at processing stuff. And you can see there that we have unlocked new stuff by building the refinery. So if we hold down left button and press left on our D-pad, we can see our progression. And if we scroll down, I can now see that because I built the basic refinery right here, I get ore detectors, I get drills, assemblers, refineries. Awesome. There's a bunch of stuff here that I can build now. Now, I'd love to go directly to a full assembler. It's just simply better than the basic assembler. However, it requires metal grids. And metal grids require cobalt. And we don't have any cobalt yet. So, we will get that shortly. But for now, we're going to do a basic assembler. However, we're running out of power. If we look at this refinery here and go into the control panel, we can see that in the bottom right, it requires 330 kilowatts. And our wind turbine is only making us 327, so we're just shy of being able to run this refinery properly. If I go and grab some stone, which I probably have, yeah, a little bit of stone here in the survival kit. This will be able to process it, but it doesn't have full power. I wouldn't be able to add anything to this grid without it being an issue for my power reserves. As such, what I should do is add a few more turbines. Now, I'm going to also add a couple armor blocks. Turbines need a little bit of space in between them each, so I'm going to add some armor to give a little bit extra space, such that if I need to, I can add up to four more turbines. And I'm going to place this turbine down right here 
and right here. And then build them up. And they should be giving me additional power at the same rate as the one up here. As we have them enough off of the voxel that they are giving their optimal. Now, they're only giving me 327 kilowatts because I'm so high up in the mountains. If I was lower down in a valley, they would actually be giving me 400 kilowatts. So, some issues with my start here. But whatever, we just build more. They're not that expensive. Excellent. So now we can go back into the control panel here, and we can see that each wind turbine is making me 327 kilowatts. Okay, we have a basic refinery. We can put stone into it. It'll produce the stone as fast as it wants. However, we don't have any way to use those components. So if I wanted to, I'd have to gather all the stuff out of here and take it over to the survival kit and then put it into the survival kit and then allow it to be able to use them. Eh, that's way too much work. I want to just be able to say, hey, Here's a bunch of resources, make me a bunch of components, just like the survival kit does. So we need a basic assembler. So let's go here, and it happens to be right here at the bottom, and we will already have that on our build planner. We set it there before. So let us aim over at the survival kit, hold down right button, and press our select or, or inventory button, and all components were successfully withdrawn. Then we can select the bill the basic assembler and see what its conveyor ports are like so the basic assembler actually only has one conveyor port as you can see yeah we'll just make sure this is upright yeah there's nothing on this thing it's just one conveyor port which is a little annoying that is the reason why i had this spot because if this backside doesn't have a conveyor port, it could be against the tower. Who cares? And this one spot, the front of it, can go into the refinery. And that will make it work. Excellent. It's like I planned that ahead. <laughs> it's like I know what I'm doing. And then because we've already pulled out all the resources with the build planner, we just build it up. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Excellent. By building the basic assembler, you have unlocked new parts. So again, we can hold down left button and press left on the D-pad to look through our tree here and see that there should be some more things that we have unlocked. We also unlocked stuff because we unlocked the, uh, the wind turbine last time. But we have all sorts of awesomeness available to us. Looks like, yeah, we've unlocked an assembler because we've made the basic assembler. We've also unlocked spotlights and turrets and medical rooms, and as well as some basic lighting, which is very useful to your, your base won't be pitch black in the middle of the night, as well as batteries and uh, all sorts of stuff. Excellent. So now we essentially have the functionality of our survival kit but on the base here so if i go grab some stone down in my little pit here wherever my little pit is there it is it blends into the surface so well we can throw into it and it'll process everything and make us any resources we need okay come back here with this stone we can plop that into our refinery it'll rip through it nice and quick and then we're able to go over to production and say, hey, build me some steel plate, how about? And it will start up building steel plate. And you can see we actually have more options here. We have power cells, uh, magazines for our gun, radio communication components, medical components, detector components, all sorts of new things that we were able to build because we have the more advanced assembler. Very importantly as well small steel tubes i don't believe the this thing over here can build small steel tubes no it cannot small steel tubes are very important when it comes to building conveyors things that allow you to connect these conveyor spots to each other so that is the one of the main step ups going over to here 
But now, I'd like to build a storage compartment here. However, that's going to have some issues. If I go over to my gas and logistics and aim down, we can see we have small cargo container. Excellent. This needs some small steel tubes. Okay, we have the ability to make those now. Oh, this also needs four metal grids. I don't really have four metal grids, right? If we look at the assembly here and we look at metal grids, we put them into queue, they require cobalt. And I don't have cobalt yet. We will get some cobalt in the future, but we don't have it yet. So in order to build those metal grids, we can't, right? We can't do that. But we can. We can salvage. This spawn pod has some grids on it. Each of these thrusters has a grid. So if you grind down these four thrusters, you will have just enough grids to throw yourself together a storage compartment on your platform, which is awesome, so that you are able to store everything onto your platform. So, if I come back over here, I grab Ian Gas and Logistics, the small cargo container, and you can see that this small cargo container has ports on every single face. It is actually very useful to place somewhere as like a, a junction between multiple sections of grids. If we do, do, do get rid of that for a moment, we're going to need some interior plate to place it. And let's see how much resources we have already from grinding down those thrusters. So I'll place the small car container there. And then let's weld it up with what we have. And we can see that we still need some things, such as 20 small steel tubes. We'll have to uh, create them here with a refinery. Thankfully, we can still access the refinery through this unfinished item. So I'm going to need 20 of those. But I don't have enough resources for that. I don't have enough stuff. Oh, I have to go back and mine things. Ugh. Not necessarily. Let me grab all this stuff here. And let me transfer it over into the assembler. Oh, come on. A little bit of getting used to the controls here. Excellent. So we have all these things in the assembler. But what use is that? Well, we can actually deconstruct something we have already built such that we can add its resources back into the available pool of stuff to build. So, we just place everything in there. Go over to production. And press Y to switch over into dis disassembling mode. And I can say, did I really need 132 motors right now? Not really. So why don't I disassemble 100 of them? Uh, right button. Come on. It's not wanting to do the right button to put 100 into order. Ah. Oh well. But I can see I can add motors here, and it's ripping apart the motors, and then adding their resources back into the available pool, such that then I can switch back into assembling mode, and then I have the resources to build my, my tubes. What about that? So that way, you don't actually have to, sometimes, go and get some more resources. You can just take what you have and reappropriate them. This is especially useful if you have a, uh, say, a, an NPC ship that you have scavenged and you want to grind it all down, put all the components into storage, and then disassemble them back into ingots so you can make them into whatever you need. Excellent. So now I should have enough stuff in storage such that I can finish this thing. So I will hold down ref click to add the stuff to my build planner. I'll hold down right button and press 
my storage button cannot withdraw 20 interior plates oh good good to know i need to add 20 interior plates into my build queue all right and now i can draw draw this out all components are sexually withdrawn excellent and we're building our cargo container and by building cargo container you have unlocked new blocks but now super basic station here we can just come up to the cargo container dump all of our resources the ores will automatically be pulled into the refinery and processed and then automatically put into the assembler and made into components that we can use the next thing to do is to actually rip apart this spawn pod because we're done with it we have every bit of its capability and more on this platform so we need to transfer this survival kit from here to there as this is our respawn point so let's grind it down now at this point if i die i can't respawn because there is no spawn point for me so what i need to do is get that point onto here correctly without dying and if i am not mistaken production the survival kit is under basic assembler yes it's under production and medical so we'll add that to our thing and thankfully by the grace of the developers the survival kit for the small size, the ship size, and the station size blocks is the exact same amount of resources. <laughs> so you don't have to go through and mine a whole bunch of extra stuff. You can just place it and then weld it back up and then you're good. It's a little extra steel plate, but nothing I don't have. And now that it's welded back up here, we can access it and refill our energy from the renewable wind power. Excellent. Now we don't have to worry about running out of power because that other drop pod was only running on battery. Now we have infinite power. And as long as this station survives, which it should, I will always have a place to respawn. So now our, our future is secured in this playthrough. Now the rest of it is to grind down this rest of this uh, little respawn pod as we're, we're done with it. We can take all of its components and we can place them all into our little storage compartment here. Along with that, we can go and we can transfer such as all of this ice and the O2H2 generator. Oh, geez. A little bit of clang there. As some things fall apart. And we can put an H2O2 generator on here, which should be under gas and logistics. Yes, right there. So we'll add that to our thing. And we can see it's got a conveyor on that side and on this side as well as uh, to do on the ends there and there. So I'm actually going to place it so that it is, ah, uh, should I do vertical or should I do horizontal? Ah, uh, we'll, we'll place it like so. So it is lying down onto the ground and then we'll rotate it in place until we have access to one of those ports. Excellent. Now this one will take a little extra bits here, some computers and motors, but that is absolutely fine. We'll just left click to add it to the build planner, come over here, hold down right button, hit inventory, so withdraw those components, and then build it up. Once you get used to that, it's super easy and you're capable of doing it really quickly. Now when I place the ice into the small cargo container here, it should automatically disappear gets sucked into the H2O2 generator. And then if I use the survival kit, 
we can see my O2 and H2 settings at the bottom are not completely full, it'll automatically fill them up and use a little bit of the ice. So now our station is fully functional with our respawn pod being entirely useless at this point. The only thing left to do with it is to grind it down and actually, if you wanted to, farm up a couple of the unlocks from your technology tree. So for example, let's look at our tech tree and let's see if anything that we could grind down and then grind back up in order to unlock the next component. Hmm, is there anything? Oh, hey, hey, beacon. If we grind it down and grind it back up, we'll get radar. Okay, or at least I like an antenna. We have a beacon here. So let's grind it down, being very careful not to fully destroy it. Just take it down below functional. It'll look like it's unbuilt now. Then I weld it back up. I have unlocked new blocks. Beautiful. Let's see if there's anything else we can do that to. So we've done that to the beacon right here to get us antennas. Now, is there interior walls? It's not on this thing. There is refineries. We don't have them on here yet. Uh, landing gear. Landing gear. Landing gear. Definitely. So let's grind down landing gear. And then grind it back up. And we've got new blocks. Isn't that so easy? We can farm our way through these unlocks super quick here. Do, 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 do. Anything else? From landing gear. It looks like that might be it to what's available with this particular drop pod. Yeah, that looks like it for now. So, the rest of the time for this drop pod is actually... Ooh, there is an antenna on this thing. Let's get that antenna ground down and rebuilt. Unlock new blocks. <laughs> so there you go. There's the different blocks you can grind down and unlock in order to fill out your tech tree very quickly in the early game. But for now, between th this episode and the next one, I'm going to completely grind down this thing, gather all of its resources, and just dump them all into my cargo container here as storage. Next episode, we are going to go over how you should start automating the mining process because going down into these mines and manually drilling out stuff and picking up the stone is boring and stupid and slow. We want automatic mining. We want awesomeness. So I'm going to show two ways in which we can get that done. First, sort of the uh, one and a half automation method where we're still manually drilling, but we don't have to pick it up anymore. And the second method where we're going to put on some drills onto our station and we're going to extend them down into the ground with some pistons and rotors. But that is going to be for the next time. Until then, thanks for watching and good hunting out there, fellow engineers.